Oh, we're at the outside edge. So you see the outsides are just capped off with a door. It's basically, you know, I didn't I didn't want to turn that door off. I still Oh, we could have made it. Oh, it was it was open. What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today in Scrap Mechanic and I've always wanted to make a maze in Scrap Mechanic but the one problem I had with a maze was the fact that a maze once you've made it is fixed and you can't really change how you navigate through the maze and so I decided you know what instead of building a maze or a maze with shifting walls or something I would simply just build a maze of doors and so here is the maze it's uh it's really cool as you can see there's a room with uh with four doors and if we hit this button here, it opened one of the doors. Which door is it? And there we go. We got this door open. So now you can see we can make our way into the maze. And this is a pretty simple maze. It's really kind of awesome. And, and that's all it is. I mean, we just have this little room. And, you know, every time we hit the button, it'll open a different door and problem solved. And, of course, you know, that, that on its own is pretty exciting. And uh, it's just a relatively simple module. We'll take this apart afterwards and look at how it works. But really, we can just, you know, hit this button and it'll pick a new door and uh, it'll take three seconds and then it'll close that door and it'll open up a new one. And so that's a pretty simple module. And I thought, well, if I take that module and I put 25 of them together to make a 5x5 five five grid, then you have an actual awesome maze. Now, of course, each module you can see here, well, let's just zoom out just to really... It's quite large. So each module is identical. Each one makes its own decisions to open a door. And so you can see there, these two are open. And the other key to this kind of a random shifting maze is that when this door is opened on this module, it will also open the door on the adjacent module. But this module doesn't necessarily have to pick the same door as this one. So this one will open a door, and because it opened the door to this little hallway, it opens the door on this one, which then in turn could have a different door open, like this door or something. And so you can see right here, for example, this module has three doors open when really it only picked one, and this one also picked one, and this one picked one, and this one picked one, and then this one has a door open here, so we can navigate our way through, and so you can see we've made ourselves a maze. And now, of course, you're probably wondering, well, Khan, having just because you have all these doors open it doesn't mean that you're going to make it all the way to the end and that's true see we got let's let's start here at the end and if we work our way backwards we'll probably hit a dead end right here oh no right here right here see we can't get past this room but what if the doors are on a timer and they shift while you're going through the maze? And that's basically what this is. I actually was watching the movie Maze Runner and they have that sort of shifting maze and it got me into thinking of making a shifting maze, but not with predetermined patterns, but one that was really truly random and you know, each set of doors is identical looking. So it is a little disorienting. Of course, you can look through the glass ceiling if you wanted to. Uh, the glass ceiling is mainly there just in case you want to go and laugh at your friends or something. But uh, I thought it was a pretty sweet idea to make this kind of shifting mage. So all these modules, you can see, they're all independently set up. And they're all designed to just be wired into each of the adjacent modules using this. So we could expand this even further just by wiring in more modules. Of course, with 25 of them, it's actually... It's zero lag when you have it welded to the ground like this, but as soon as we disconnect that, the game basically dies. You can still kind of manipulate it, but it's very, very painful, very low frame rate. So I didn't want to make it any bigger in case it would actually crash the game. Uh, mainly, I think it's just because there's a lot of different bearings, but once it's welded, it's really no issue at all and quite awesome. So we're going to get in and check it out. Now, it's pretty simple to use. Uh, there's two switches here and a timer. So the timer is the additional delay between door changes. The doors by default change every three seconds. If you want to make that longer, you can add time to this timer. And if we did this, for example, this would make it six seconds. So it would be whatever plus three. So if we go like this, this would be 10 seconds per change. But we can just leave this at zero for the ultimate awesome experience. And then, of course, the blue button, well, the, the blue switch, I'll show you. If we turn this on, and we'll wait for the first door to open. Uh, uh, uh. You can see there's a there's a warning chime and it's one per second and then the doors close on the third chime or they move in whatever direction. So it is to warn you. It it's not really needed when you have it on the zero seconds because it's it's just constantly ringing. So you can mute it by hitting the blue. And you can see that mutes everything and it won't uh, it won't make any noise. But if we leave this on, it'll just go back to making noise and it's only really useful if we, you know, change this time to have more of a delay. So for example, if we make this, you know, let's say let's say an additional three seconds. Now it's useful because the pulse will go and you'll see it'll go through 
Uh, and then it'll warn you. Uh, and then it'll be silent again. Uh, and then it'll warn uh, you. So it's only uh, really useful if you have the delay. But because we're going to try this without the delay, we're just going to turn that off. We're going to mute this. And uh, we're going to turn this on. And after we hear the doors change for the first time, we're going to try sprinting through the maze. Okay, doors have changed. Uh, not Oh, there. That door just opened. Okay, get... Oh, no, this is useless room. Oh, no. Okay, well, it opened up. Uh, okay, we're trapped again. Okay, this room. This room. This room. This room. Okay, go, go, go. Oh, no. Don't get... I'm stuck. Okay, get out. Okay, this way. Good. That one stayed open. Uh, oh, we can't go... That one's still opening. Okay. Oh, okay. Of course, now it's closed. I don't want to go back that way. I gotta go that way. Gotta get... No, 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 no. Oh, we're trapped in the hallway. Now we have to wait until one of these two rooms decides to open this door. It's a lot of fun. I've been enjoying just trying to run through it as fast as possible. Okay, we're back in here. We keep going the wrong... Ugh, God dang it. Of course, if you add more of a delay, it is easier because you have longer to sort of check all the paths and see how far you can really get through a section. Okay, let's get over here. This one's opening up. Good, good, good. So you're trying to just make it from the green wall to the red wall. It's, uh... It's pretty awesome. Okay, that that's the green wall. Look at that. That would have been so useful to have before. Okay, this way. Good, good, good. There, we only, we're on the last row. Open up. No, you're not going to open. Open up. Oh, it moved, too. Like, it wanted to open. Okay, let's, let's just... I don't want to go backward. Oh, we're trapped in another hallway. God, you can't make... You can't second-guess yourself. If you second-guess yourself, you're screwed. All right, we're going to... This is some Indiana Jones stuff right here. Okay, Maze Runner. Okay. Oh, we're at the outside edge. So you see the outsides are just capped off with a door. It's basically, you know, I didn't I didn't want to turn that door off. I still Oh, we could have made it. Oh, it was it was open. It was Yeah, I don't I'm not going in there. Of course, if the game does fix the light. Yes, there we go. So that was I don't know how long that was. That was way too long. We're going to try this again. All right, let's see if we can do this faster this time. This was that's on the fastest delay. So I didn't speed up the delay any more than that, mainly because any faster than three seconds, like if they were instantly changing, you really don't have any time to react. Plus, the randomizer, which we'll look at in a sec, it uses an actual free-spinning disc, so you have to kind of give it time to pick a new random position. If you just keep triggering it every time, a lot of the time you'll get the same door and you won't get a new random one. Of course, this part's random too. You're kind of stuck waiting for one to open. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I don't want to go in here. This is a useless door. Give me a door with like two transitions. Two tra Okay. Oh, it was right there. Man, this is so difficult. Okay, come on. One of these one of these doors. You want it to open too. Come on, open up. Give me give me another. Give me another. Come on, door. There we go. Okay, in. Okay, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna take it. Go this way. Go this way. Yes, yes, yes. No, no. Trapped in a hall. Gotta stop going and get trapped in the hallways. Alright. Okay, well that was useless. Okay, back through here. Up this way. Yes, yes. So many doors. Oh, trapped in this hallway. No. Okay, we got it. Yes. Out, 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 out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is... Oh, no. Oh, I got... Oh, I, I got tricked by the closed door. Now we're on the edge. Uh, we're stuck here. Okay, good. Back in. Oh, look at that. Fantastic. Once you get into that last row, you can really... You can just sit in the one cell. I mean, it's a one in four chance that you're going to get it. Okay, we're going to do it one the last time here. I think we can get a really record speed run on this one. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, amped up, amped up. Nope. Nope. Come on, doors. This is honestly, it's a lot of fun. I've, once I built this, I was having so much fun just running around and actually trying to get through the maze. And, uh, it's really frustrating at times. You do get turned around sometimes. Oh, look at that. We got two more, two more cells, I think. We're in the second row. I'd love to see the above view. Um, oh, no, don't. Okay, if you get trapped behind a door, just crouch, move out. Works out real well. But yeah, it would be really cool to have someone track you from above, but of course, it would be super, super difficult. That was a super quick run, though. Really, really awesome. If you really want an insane experience, too, you can try playing top-down view. So you can see if we go top-down, uh, every transition, the camera will kind of freak out. But you can actually run through this top-down. And I'm fully zoomed out, and uh, it won't look through the glass. So you can really have just a crazy maze experience. This is super disorienting. In first person, it's, uh, it's definitely a lot easier. But the top-down experience is... Okay, we gotta go... Okay, this way. You just kind of strafe, and it makes your life easier. Oh, yeah. Look at... Okay. Open this one. All right, where are we going this way? Of course, this is... There we go. Look at that. Problem solved. So it's not a very long maze. I would really have loved to have made this 10 by 10 instead of 5 by 5 have that much more space. Uh, but that would be four times the number of blocks, and it would be four times as laggy. So it would just be absolutely insane. Of course, 
this thing is lag free when uh, when it's all one creation here welded to the ground. In case you're wondering how this works, let's just rip this one apart. So we'll just move these out of the way. You don't really need those. And we'll just open this up completely just so we can look at all the inner workings. And it's actually pretty simple. So I designed one of these to be 100% modular. So we could use as many of these as we want in whatever configuration we want. You don't necessarily have to have a perfect box pattern. Could make like a big plus sign or like, you know, a big long rectangle, let's say two rows that goes all the way down. Really whatever you want to do. So I will upload that full five by five maze to the workshop, but I'll also upload the individual module in case you're interested in how to do that. And it's really simple how you connect them to each other. So I'll show you that. Now the red switch controls the sound. So we've got a single tote block here and that has the three seconds. So every time we hit the green, it sets a memory bit, randomizes the outcome and then picks the door. So really simply each door has its own memory bit here up on the roof, which goes to the controller. And when you want to wire these two together, you have to wire the white and the black to the next module over. And we'll go through that in a sec, but basically each of these modules, when the memory bit is activated, is activating this controller and is also activating the controller on the module next to it. Now, it picks the random using this really simple rotating motor mechanism. So the electric motor is set to a pretty quick speed. It rotates that bar, you can see, rotating this sort of duck wheel around and the duck wheel hits a random sensor. And because of the way the physics collisions work, you can see it is relatively random enough. It's not using any sort of logic or anything like that. And you can't really predict the movements and the speed of the motor and stuff like that. So each of these sensors then goes to one of the four doors. And when the timer is elapsed, the three second timer, it basically selects, okay, which sensor is activated, which door do I need to activate? And that's really how each module works on their own. So all we have to do when we wire them together is wire all the green switches up to one master timer, which is underneath the front there. And then of course, wire all the reds up to one single switch so we can mute the audio if we don't want the audio. So if we wanted to wire two of these up, it's really simple. We just spot a second one and we just weld the two of them together. So whoops, we can just take this corner here and weld it to that corner like so. And now we've got a two section maze. And then all we would do is take this white OR gate here wire it into the black one and then take the white one from this side and wire it into the black one on that side, creating sort of a loop. And now when this one triggers that direction, it will also trigger this one and vice versa. So it doesn't select the random, the random doesn't change. And you can see if we, if we go to this one, we'll open this one up as well, just so we can see. And you'll notice the random selection is still different for each one. They will both randomize their own door. And if they pick the same door, great. If they don't pick the same door, it doesn't matter. It allows for those sort of combinations. So you can see this one picked this outside door, but this one over here actually picked the door facing this one. So if we head on in, it creates a tunnel all the way through. And then of course we could connect this one to another module and this would trigger the door in the next module. And that's the basic principle of how the entire maze works. You can see here, all the red and green ones in each row are connected to the end ones and all these end ones are connected into the master timer circuit which is just a really simple uh, a timer with an XOR gate that alternates back and forth and then it has this additional timer wired into it so it's, it just sends a signal around a loop really simple stuff uh, not too hard to set up and of course I will upload this if you want to take a look at it But you can see each module is really just connected to each other module through these two connections So the entire system works really well and gives you a really awesome random maze effect So it's a very simple principle. I'm really really happy with how it turned out. I really like it and uh, I'm gonna run through it again So let's just oh Let's mute it You can mute it once it's started that won't affect it But if you change the timer once it started you are gonna have to re-hit that green switch or else it won't uh, it won't start where okay this door's open let's go oh my goodness really okay one of these doors okay this would be really cool in multiplayer although i'm not sure the multiplayer lag will enjoy the large creation size i'm, I'm not ex oh look at this look at look at right through Okay, this way, perfect. Oh, look at that. Easiest maze solve in the world. But like I said, you could d download the module, wire them up however you want, and make your own maze configuration if you want. I think it's a really cool idea. If the game gets a much better you know, performance and, and the lag gets a lot less, I would definitely expand this maze. You can't make this with terrain, unfortunately, because of course, you do want to have all the moving pieces, but it would be really cool to have a huge 10 by 10 maze or 20 by 20 or whatever, and really try and run your way all the way through, especially with a group of people. But we, we'd need a few game changes before then, but make sure you guys let me know what you think of this in the comments down below. I thought it was a really cool project and uh, make sure of course you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, 
And uh, let's just get through this maze here. All right, come on. All right, we're going to make it through. We're going to make it through. Oh, look at that. Perfect. One door. One door. Just open. No. Okay, this one. No. Th this one. Oh, that one was open. Oh, no. That's dead end. That one's open. That one's open. That one's open. Oh, yes. But yeah, make sure you guys hit those buttons down below and uh, let me know what you think. Download this from the workshop if you want. I'll include the link in the description below. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see y'all next time.